We're surfing the bow wave of some fast solar wind that's giving us some extended storming. We've got a glancing solar storm blow, and that big region that's been blasting on the sun's far side, well, it's back. Those stories and more are in this week's Spotlight. If you want to learn how weather from our star causes impacts at the Earth that shape the future of our world, join professors Dr. Jenny Meehan, Michael Cook, and myself as we guide you through a space weather certificate program like no other. To enroll in the space weather and environment science program offered at Millersville University, go to millersville.com edu slash swen. It's weather for the 21st century. This forecast also sponsored in part by CW Ops. Space weather this week is giving us a few surprises. As we take a look at our Earth-facing disk, it doesn't look like all that much is going on. In fact, all these active regions have been pretty quiet. We've actually been down to low noise on the, in the X-ray flux and on the radio bands over the last few days, and it will continue to be like that for just maybe a day or two longer because some stuff is coming around the corner. But as we really look at the disk, the only thing we have to deal with is coronal holes. we got a coronal hole here and a coronal hole here. Hey, it's actually looking pretty festive. You've got an eye, an eye, a nose, and a mouth. This could be a jack-o'-lantern for Halloween, for goodness sake. But in actuality, when we take a look at it kind of from a different view, this is uh, looking a little bit more in the outer corona, you can actually see these coronal holes look a little bit more connected, don't they? In fact, when we take a look at the uh, potential field source surface model, you can see some open field lines here. Here's a white open field line. There's another couple ones. Here's one here, and you'll see another one over here. These are all mapping to these coronal hole regions, but look at this area right in here. Do you see the cute little field lines closed like that, these little loops? Well, this is because this is a kind of a closed region, and believe it or not, this is the area right in here that is kind of the so solar wind source generator for Earth right now, and it really is almost a transition region where you've got some fast solar wind from these coronal holes interacting with some slow solar wind. This is actually what we call it. We call it a stream interaction region. And Earth is almost surfing it right now. It's kind of on this bow wave, like when you get fast wind hit like a, like a boat in the water driving this bow wave. Earth is kind of stuck in this bow wave as this uh, you know, as the sun is rotating here and as the stream is going over us. So this is giving us some really great ex extended storming, especially at high latitudes. And that's going to allow uh, roar photographers to catch some substorms, even at mid latitudes, if they know what they're doing. So it is a little bit deceptive. But really, now what I want to talk about is what's going on on the east limb over here. You might notice an inner a, a pow, pow, and a little something there, and then a poof. So like a one, two, three, four. Well, believe it or not, this is actually kind of a complicated eruption that launched an, a very interesting looking structure. Uh, and as we turn it, I'm turning this into a different wavelength here so, so you can see it once again more easily. And if you look closely, you can see, let me pop it here. You look closely, you can see right here, there's this kind of a vertical little filament. And then there's this horizontal one that goes this way. There's a kind of a curved structure in here. And all of these get kind of involved in this and almost like a structure that's kind of like a C shape that does this. So you'll watch this one erupt, boom. Then you'll watch this one, boom. Then you'll see that pop right there and then a little bit of poof. And that was happening right when Suvi was doing some calibration. So it kind of got a little wonky there. But you saw that little poof. And I think that was the last little bit, the tether that let it finally release. And this comes out in a chronograph as a really complicated structure. But there may be more structure to that. It may not just be a big tangled mess. But we'll talk more about that as we get into the modeling of this. Because this is the solar storm that could actually graze Earth here. Or at least give us a little wake over the next couple days. So it's going to be very interesting to watch. Now, as we get back to our Earth-facing disk, you can watch this again, pop, pop. Here's a little something and then a little puff right there. Very interesting. We've had a couple other filament launches that are not Earth-directed, but this, but if you can notice, we had some poofs that looks like there's something going off on the far side. Those are the big far side eruptions, likely from region 4246, which we'll be talking about as we get into the far side of the sun, because that region is about to rotate back into Earth view. And although everything is quiet right now, man, it's the calm before the storm. 
And now switching to our far-sided sun, once again, we can no longer use Solar Orbiter because Solar Orbiter is looking at the front side of the sun. You can see in our orbit circle there. So we do have to use just SDO AIA imagery. You can see it here in red. We have Stereo A, which is sitting on the west limb looking at part of the sun from behind and then we've also got uh jsoc hmi the helio seismology the far-sighted viewer to kind of fill in the gaps for us so as we stand here and take a look at the east limb of the sun you can watch kind of things move along we've been having a few regions that are come rotating back into earth view over the last few days they have been giving us a little bit of activity but it really hasn't been all that exciting however when we take a look at the far side Look at old friend 4246 and old friend 4250 and, and 48. You can see them all right here, still very active on the sun's far side. This is where all of the big blasts have come from. We don't know whether or not when these regions rotate back into Earth, you can also see region 4258 and 42. 40 also growing so there's one two three regions here that are going to be very exciting as we get to the to the next few days because region 4246 is going to be rotating back into earth view here in probably the next two days maybe three days but not much more than that and because it's been firing so much on the sun's far side there may not be any bullets left in the gun but we shall see. It's likely going to continue to be a big flare producer, and we could see more activity from all of these regions, as well as getting radio blackouts back and big poss possibilities for big solar storms and radiation storms. So enjoy the quiet while you have it, because in the next couple days, you're going to start seeing a big change. And now switching back to take a closer look at that solar storm that's going to give us a glancing blow, we switch to our prediction model, Enlil. Now this is NASA's version of the model. You're looking down at the sun from the North Pole with Earth being off to the right. And as they launch that solar storm, you can watch it. It's mainly going to come out east of Earth, but it does have a little bit of a wing here that looks like it's going to be grazing Earth uh, somewhere around early on the 1st. So along with the fast solar wind that we've been getting, well, we also have a good chance to get a little bit of wake or possibly more from this e this solar storm because it is a complicated structure it might be a little bit bigger than we expected and now to try a new tool i just developed this is a 3d visualization of that nasa model that you saw done with a little bit of finesse because nasa uses something called swipsy cat and they do something called a lemniscate which is really like a cone and that's exactly what they launch into the enlo model to make it work so what i've done with this model this actually has a flux rope structure you can see in here but it also has this gold lemniscate that is really the view that nasa used to be able to model that big solar storm coming out. Now, what's interesting about this is that why I'm going to back it up just a smidge. You can see this big, you know, what we typically call the solar slinky in the center of all of this. And the reason why I've angled it the way I have is literally because of the coronagraph. Here's that coronagraph image that's showing kind of that structure that we saw before. I've tilted the sun just a tiny bit because the lemniscate isn't quite exactly catching the whole thing. But if we do it like this, you can actually see two sets of like curves, almost like almost like it's curved around here and here. And so when I push this forward in time, you can actually see I've changed the coloring a little bit so you can see this. It almost looks as if this center line right here, that this is the thread of that flux rope structure. And I'll give you a better view of it in a second. It's almost like that center line kind of cuts through the first curve, flips back around out in front, and comes down through this other one. And if that is true, it's kind of hard to tell. I'm kind of showing it off. If that is true, then we could get a better chance of getting hit by this structure than you might realize. Now I've flipped it here in 3D. This is what's so great about this visualization. You still see this lemniscate here, which is that big cone, kind of like a big ice cream cone coming out. But there's more realistic flux rope structure that we don't necessarily know which orientation it's going to be. But if it follows what that coronagraph showed and has structure something like this, well, then we can actually begin to make a little bit more sense of how it's going to hit Earth. It's definitely not going to be in the what we call the apex of the structure, the front of the structure. It's going to be more in what we call the legs of the structure. But if it is tilted the way we, it looks like it might be tilted, well, notice this structure here is actually going to go underneath Earth. Earth is sitting right here just underneath the sun. I see it moving. Woo, hello. <laughs> hello, structure. Okay, come on back. Oh, there we go. So there's Earth. So I'm just trying to, whoop, there we go. There's Earth, rather. So I'm just trying to give you a perspective. 
Here's the sun, here's Earth, and you can see this structure might actually go underneath Earth. But if so, if it goes south of Earth, we may still get some wake from this structure. So expect, my guess is expect that it could be a little bit on the late side, might arrive a little bit later than um, early in, on the 1st. But if it does, we might actually get to see a bit more extended storming because it's not just that fast wind that's hitting us. It might actually be just the leg of this particular solar storm. And now switching to our moon, we are passing through the second quarter phase on our way to a full moon with a full moon being on the 5th. So you night sky watchers, if you want to catch some dim objects in the sky, like, I don't know, maybe some witches flying over the moon or maybe some aurora, well, you're going to have this bright companion. So it's going to be a bit spooky. So be sure to catch your, rise, your local rise and set times. And now switching to our solar storm conditions and our aurora possibilities over this coming week, we are in that skirting that bow wave of that fast solar wind. That's why I've got these symbols like this. If you're at high latitudes, aurora is definitely a possibility. In fact, Noah's giving us about a 60% chance of a major storm on the 30th and still a 45% of a major storm on the, the uh, on Halloween before things begin to calm down a little bit. We do have that glancing solar storm blow. So I'm putting a storm watch on us for the first and then things should settle down by the second and possibly into the third. Now at mid latitudes, well, we're only expecting active conditions and that aurora watch is going to come with some caveats because likely you're going to have to chase some substorms because this isn't all that strong of a bow wave but we do have about 10 percent chance of a minor storm things could settle down a little bit on halloween and then pick up just a little bit we have about a maybe 15 percent chance of a minor storm with that storm watch on the first it all depends upon how that solar storm hits us or if it gives us just a glancing blow or a little bit more than that but then things should definitely settle down by the second into the third and uh, things should be back to being calm. But remember, we do have that new uh, active region that's coming. So it, things could change very quickly. Now, switching to our solar flare and dayside radio blackout outlook over the coming week. Right now, we are sitting at the low 100s, low 125s, but this is going to rise easily to the mid 100s by next early next week. We're sitting at low noise right now. In fact, NOAA's only giving us about a 5% chance of M-class flares at the R1 to R2 level radio blackout. But again, this is going to change here over this next few days because old region 4246 is rotating back into Earth view here over the next couple days. And that risk for big solar flares and radio blackouts will rise. I would expect by Monday we should be at least 25% chance of a R1 to R2 level radio blackout. And we will have a non-trivial uh, chance for X-class flares at the R3 level radio blackout. And next week, it's not going to look nearly this pretty. So uh, amateur radio operators and emergency responders enjoy the quiet while you have it because things are going to change. And now switching to our radiation storm and polar aviation outlook over the coming week. Everything is in the green this week. We are sitting at the D1 normal range. This is at flight level 360 for you aviators. It's also the S0 quiet range for everyone else. We're only at a 1% chance of an S1 to S2 radiation storm easily over the next few days. That will change as we move into early next week because of region 4246 and friends that are rotating back into Earth view. They are radiation storm producers and solar storm producers and solar flare producers. So enjoy the quiet. And if you're a frequent flyer, well, you're all in the clear. So the space weather this week is a bit on the surprising side. We've been surfing that bow wave of that fast solar wind, which has been giving us some extended storming. So aurora photographers, if you're at high latitudes, you could chase those substorms for yet another day or two before things kind of peter out. And then we also have that glancing solar storm blow, which could actually give us a little extension of storming, especially at high latitudes, maybe possibly through the first before things calm down. And now amateur radio operators and emergency emergency responders, well, enjoy the quiet because things are going to change when old region 4246 and friends returns into Earth view. Remember, it's been firing off big solar storms as well as big radiation storms and big radio blackouts. So be aware it's not going to be a rig when everything seems to kind of get wonky next week. And now you GPS users, well, right now everything looks pretty good. The day side is reasonably calm. The night side is a little bit disturbed, but not too bad. So as long as you stay vigilant near dawn and near dusk, your GPS reception, at least for the next couple days, should be pretty top-notch. I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.